Hey guys, this is Faye from Faye's World Media. In this video, I will walk you through the brand new partner model inside Adobe Firefly available to you today, and it's called Flux 2 Pro. The reason why I'm gonna launch this video right before the new year is that until January 15th, you get unlimited credits, which means you can check out Flux 2 Pro alongside all the other models inside Adobe Firefly without worrying about using up your credits or spending more money. I think that is absolutely the best way to test out AI models. So in this example, I wanna show you how I translate my mom's 2D watercolor on silk Chinese Empress paintings into 3D sculptures. I wasn't able to test this out using other models before. I'm extremely excited because Flux 2 Pro promises to deliver sharper, higher quality image up to 4 NP. In addition, it also offers higher prompt accuracy, better physics, which means I can now show you not only how to create a sculpture facing forward at the camera, but also the side view. And I'm able to tweak the image and modify it even more. In this video, I'm not trying to pretend that I'm a guru because I'm not. I'll show you things that work really well, but also the failed examples just to make this learning experience as realistic and helpful as possible. As always, I welcome your feedback and thoughts. I look forward to 2026 to see how AI can help us democratize content creation and bring our voices forward as creators and small business owners. Today, I wanna to show you how Flux 2 Pro works. As you can see, when you first land on Firefly at Adobe, you can decide whether you wanna generate an image or a video. You can select the model, which again is Flux 2 Pro. Flux 1 context still works, but Pro is going to give you 4NP, which is much higher quality generations. It will cost you more credits, but until January 15th, 2026, you get unlimited credits. I want to use image reference. I can click on more and it takes you to this generation landing page where you can actually do so much more, adding reference images, choosing aspect ratio, that sort of thing. But there's another way to get here. You can also click on new and say image. To start, type in a prompt. Typically I work with white screen 16 by nine. Today, I want to reimagine one of my mom, Xiangli Arts Chinese Empresses in the modern age. So how do we do that? This is the image I'm gonna be playing with and I'm actually gonna use it as a reference image. This is one of four. You are able to select more than one reference image to generate what you need to generate. Remember what's also special about Flex 2 is that it can give you the cinematic feel. It has better physics built in, lighting control, and you can edit specific elements in or out of this painting. There is a lot you can do. So let's go ahead and enter a prompt. Now I know it's vertical, nine by 16. Envision this Chinese in a modern setting inside a museum where people can touch and observe like a sculpture. Oh my goodness. This is pretty unbelievable. It literally turned this Chinese empress into a sculpture where people can actually touch the horse and it's inside a museum. Wow. I didn't really quite expect this. Now you have different settings. Remember you have the generate tab right here. You can download this image directly here. You can apply further edits such as edit image, generative fill. You can use it as a reference image and build from there. Now, remember I can actually make further edits. Wow. Great. Now remove the people from touching the sculpture. I actually don't want people to be <laughs> surrounding this painting and touching it. I want this just be on its own. And this way I can feature it and put it on social media. And can we just take a moment to look at how cute this dragon is? There you go. Using this as a standalone image this is pretty cool. Now I want to test out something different. I am so excited about this. So let's turn this painting into a 3D sculpture inside a museum. I don't want people. I don't want random stuff. I just want to see how you can turn this flat image into a 3D sculpture. And I don't know what Flux 2 is going to do with the flowers. What do you guys think? I actually think a lot of this is preserved. The flowers have been removed. The hands don't look weird. And she's still, I think my mom's painting is more beautiful, but I still like the soft features. Now, check it out. Using this as a reference image, click on edit, use as a reference image, turn this 
sculpture 90 degrees so I can see the side view. Guys, look at this. The front view and the side view, even the museum labels and everything. This is very cool. Now, I do want to get rid of these references because I have some new images I want to check out. Inside the Tang Dynasty, look at this one. This one's stunning. Turn this painting into a sculpture, including all its characters. I think this one is definitely going to have some challenges because there's multiple people involved from different angles, as you can see, and horses, like this empress is the back facing you. But I've always wanted to create a 3D like sculpture museum from with my mom's work. And this is really blowing me away. I haven't been able to do this with some of the other models, but knowing that Flux 2 specializes in physics, have better spatial awareness. Now, I made a mistake here, as you can see, because the image is incomplete. The reason is because I set it to vertical as opposed to white screen. So let's do that again. I already set the aspect ratio. Let's redo that. I am pretty excited about this. I want to create something without that background, guys. Like you see how awkward it is, like the Empress's face against the background. But what if it's free flowing? This will require the model to imagine things it hasn't really seen, right? OK, that is something. Look at this, guys. This is definitely quite promising. Look at this. It's definitely trying to do the right things. Look at the resemblance of the outfits here that's being preserved and the horses with some of the gestures. For example, I noticed that this second empress right here, they're identical. All right. So what we're going to do is have another iteration of this. We are going to come back here and then use this as a reference image and say regenerate and make sure there are no repetitive empresses like the second one from the left. Make sure to generate all the empresses, including the one with her back facing the camera. Sometimes I feel like I just want to fix one thing at a time as opposed to trying to make it perfect. All right, so this is my third attempt of generating the 3D version of this painting. And I would say this one so far is the best. I do like the texture of this. This issue was having two empresses looking the same. And this one is to make sure that we have more empresses accounted for. Next, I want to use the latest generation as a reference image. But now I want to change the background and environment to an outdoor authentic setting staged in the dynasty in ancient China. Remember right here, prompt feature suggestion can potentially enhance the process. It's a 3D sculpture in a more realistic environment in ancient China. And just based on that context alone, that gives you like a different feel. I want to do something more accessible, imagining a specific painting like this beautiful empress painting here. I'm going to use this as a reference image. Say, imagine this painting on a series of home decors. Show me examples. Now, what I'm trying to do is to create home decors based on this painting. Now, each generation likely is going to show one thing. And this is a slightly confusing prompt. I just want to see how Flux will react to this. Ideally, I would love to see this painting plotted in different products related to one's home, but maybe I only will get one output at a time. Wow, look at this. This is very creative, different than what I thought I would get. It imagines this painting as a framed canvas, framed artwork, as a drape like flag, fabrics on the wall, as a lamp, as pillowcases, and even as a carpet. This is really cool. Just something that I would like to see what it could be. Now, a series of clothing items, wearables, and clothing items. Show me examples. Instead of imagining or having to design different products one at a time, this gives me a really quick overview into what it could potentially look good on, what I might be able to change or adapt or revise. 
Wow, look at that boom. So we have a little bit of a kimono drape where right here you can see the color. I like the fact that it actually preserved the background color, that gold silkish color. And then here we have two of the same. I do like the shirt. It looks particularly good when this pattern, when this painting is uninterrupted on the back of the shirt. Hey guys, so that concludes today's video. I realized I had sort of an awkward ending because there was no ending to that video. And I hope you were able to learn a thing or two. So let's have fun with Adobe Firefly Flux 2 Pro. I am quite excited, as you can see. I'm actually working inside a studio where you can see a lot of these stretched canvas prints, um, creation of my mom's artwork. There's some originals here as well. As you can see, my producer just behind me. Happy 2026, and I look forward to your comments, your examples, and let's celebrate the new year together with so much gratitude, and I'll see you in the next video.